Hi folks, it's Florida Man here, and today I'm beginning my series on the basics of playing diplomacy as Italy. This video is called Basics of Italy, Aperitivo. Out of all the powers in diplomacy, it is my view that Italy is the second, or perhaps the most, challenging to play effectively. It's in competition with England for the most difficult country for me personally to play. Italy, unlike England, lacks even the benefit of a highly defensible corner position. This is a power that requires great persuasive power, insight, and boldness to play effectively. In some ways, it's like Austria. It demands that you bring your very best diplomacy and employ creativity and problem-solving skills right from the beginning. Unlike Austria and Germany, Italy is not heir to some amazing natural potential. Unlike England and Turkey, Italy is not a highly defensible country. Unlike Russia, Italy does not have a position or extra units to enable it to fight a war on more than one front effectively. All that said, let's see what we can accomplish as Italy. Italy is guaranteed a build in 1901 which no power can take from you, and which you cannot fail to acquire unless you choose not to do so deliberately, or you thoroughly sabotage yourself through some imaginative means of your own. Order Naples to move to the Tyrrhenian Sea or the Ionian Sea in spring 1901. Take Tunisia in fall. Now you're at four centers, so your situation is a little better. Unfortunately, many Italian players find that they remain stuck at four centers or close to that, for much of the game. If that happens to you, you're dead before you started, and the rest of the game is usually just waiting for the doctor to officially declare it. So this is where your creativity and diplomacy come in. As Italy, it is critical that as soon as the game begins, you get a feel for the strategic thinking and intentions of every player on the board as quickly as possible. You need to find an ally or two, or preferably endear yourself to as many friendly countries as possible. Italy is not the kind of country that can initially easily power through enemies, and it doesn't particularly matter how clever the Italian player is. The most logical early allies for Italy are Austria, England, Germany, and Russia. You will note that I've just named more than half of the countries on the map. That's not an accident. For a strong Italy, you will ideally be friendly to all of those countries, and you will ideally exert a strong influence over each of their foreign policies. The ideal circumstance for Italy is that Austria and Russia will prevent Turkey from growing, and England and Germany will prevent France from growing, and ultimately, Italy will be a part of taking each of those countries out. It's unlikely you will accomplish all of those foreign policy goals, but you should at least be able to set certain countries against each other. You can try to keep Russia and Turkey from forming a trusting relationship, so that the juggernaut cannot form. You can try to keep Germany and France from trusting each other, and thereby weaken France. Above all, you must seek to prevent the formation of a Western Triple. Because that is death to Italy. Immediate, and usually without prospect of recovery. These efforts will hopefully help you survive, but it's worth noting that they are a consolation prize. What you really want is not merely to undermine the powers that might join together and attack you, but to actually destroy them. Specifically, what Italy needs to set itself up to do is to eliminate either Turkey or France, and thereby grow pretty substantially, and then turn to attack the other. Turkey and France are Italy's two great natural enemies, with whom compromise is not generally possible in the early and mid-game. To ensure you have sufficient stability to defeat Turkey or France, you must first establish a strong relationship with Austria. Austria and Italy are the only two countries that can actually attack each other in spring 1901. If that happens, the typical outcome is they both get wiped out by around 1905. So you need to form an alliance, or at least a neutral but friendly relationship, with Austria. Make it clear that you have Austria's back against Turkey, and make it very clear that you need that to be reciprocal. Turkey is a dangerous problem for you, and that problem will manifest itself sooner or later as long as Turkey survives. If you can, I like to try fostering an alliance between Austria and Russia to attack Turkey early on. I tell Russia that if it works with Austria against Turkey, Russia and I can then team up on Austria once Turkey is gone. I tend to think Russia is the ideal long-term partner for Italy, because Russia can work with Italy against both Turkey and Austria, 
and they can thereby both obtain a great deal of security and growth fairly quickly, and then move west together. However, for me that's usually contingent on Russia attacking Turkey early, rather than attacking Austria. If Russia attacks Austria, the, usually, the usual pattern is that Turkey will join in the attack, and Turkey will grow stronger, and then the momentum is on the side of the juggernaut, and the temptation of just rolling with that may be too great for your ostensible Russian ally to turn on Turkey. If you face a juggernaut, it's usually wise to extend Austria as much help as you can, even if you've otherwise committed yourself to an anti-French alliance with England and Germany. You can do a lot to slow or stop the advance of the juggernaut, especially if Austria is willing to try riskier-looking tactics, like the Kila Panto, which is probably the most efficient way to deploy your units so as to actually help fight Turkey. It also has the advantage of gaining an extra build for Italy early on, since the Kila Panto involves Italy moving through Trieste into Serbia. However, it can be... difficult for Italy to suggest the Kila Panto to Austria. It can look suspicious and self-serving, like Italy is just opportunistically seeking the chance to occupy Trieste. It's generally easier and better if Austria proposes it, so that Italy can then graciously accept and praise the Austrians' boldness and forward thinking. Unfortunately, many Austrians will not suggest the Kila Panto, because either they do not want to trust you early on, which is understandable, or they are simply not aware of it as an option, or alternatively, they lack a real sense of the danger they're in, a real sense of urgency about it. Maybe they're hoping that something will save them from the asteroid that's coming their way. Something other than you. Ideally, though, you will not face a juggernaut, you will have put Turkey and Russia at odds with each other if they haven't already done that themselves, because facing a juggernaut can force you to make some really bad gambles and potentially stop you from growing. And for Italy, at least as much as any other country, growing early on is essential. For me, my favorite thing to do is to have Turkey and Russia fighting each other, or not coordinating, in the east, and then be able to turn west, with the assurance that Austria will be a buffer between me and Turkey. Again, the persuasion skills are very important here, because if you turn west, you really need both England and Germany to open against France. Otherwise, an early Italian attack on France will probably not succeed. I recommend investing some time in selling this idea to both of them early on if you can spare it, because if you can attack and defeat France early, you can really break out of Italy's early game rot. It eliminates one of the two great threats to Italy, and the stronger of the two in my opinion, before it has the chance to fully mature as an enemy. At the same time, you need to make diplomatic agreements with France, even as you're conspiring to attack him. There's a very good chance you won't get England and Germany to agree to fight France with you, and if that's the case, you need to make sure that France is not going to build a fleet in Marseille or put a fleet in Spain's south coast. Agree to whatever you need to, to make sure France does not turn on you early. Give him reasons to want to attack one of his other neighbors, even if you have to make them up. If France attacks Italy early on, that usually ruins Italy's game completely. If you can't get England and Germany to both agree to attack France early on, you must abandon that idea for now and try to find a couple of early builds elsewhere. Elsewhere usually means Turkey. You should never attack Austria early on unless he's openly very hostile to you and or you have some sort of a deep and loving bond with the Russian player. If, in real life, you are married to the Russian player and the Russian player is saying to you, listen babe, I know you don't like drawing Italy, and I want you to know I'm going to try and make sure you have a good game anyway. Turkey wants to attack Austria, so I think you and I should join in and then eliminate Turkey once Austria is gone. Then, maybe consider going after Austria. That's a very big maybe. I would have very strong reservations about this. You have to really trust Russia to attack Austria in this situation, because you're literally putting your entire fate in Russian hands. Russia could easily just help Turkey steamroll over you once the Austrian buffer zone has been occupied, in favor of the more traditional juggernaut alliance over the winter green. But you may have to work with Russia and Turkey if you're very desperate. More commonly, you'll find Austria is willing to work with you, and the two of you can execute a Lepanto or a Kilopanto or both. That is a powerful anti-Turkish attack, and you may even get Russia to go along with the two of you in turning on Turkey after you make that attack, because Russia will be able to tell Turkey is in a bad situation, and many players prefer to be on the winning side of a fight, even if there's a risk their allies may turn on them later, rather than potentially be on the losing side. 
And if Austria and Italy work together very well, and they truly are in sync, I would say their chances of defeating Turkey are good. You may have noticed how broad and general this outline of the beginning of the game was. That's because Italy is a country that has to find an opportunity for growth, or make one, very quickly. And the details don't tend to matter that much, as long as Italy can find one or two centers beyond Tunisia and keep them. That's Italy's only real path in this game. Get bigger as quickly as you can safely manage, before the west or the east is really settled, taking centers from whichever side is giving them out. If Italy stagnates for the first couple of years, that usually means death. I will add a note of warning, however. There is one place you should not try to take centers from early on, under virtually any circumstances. I have never found it wise for Italy to go after Munich in 1901 or 1902, no matter what France promises you, no matter what is happening in the West. If you do so, you will be weakening one of your natural allies, Germany, and you will gain a center, Munich, that takes you away from your natural early paths of expansion in France, Turkey, and Austria, and of course, Munich is indefensible by Italy, if literally any other country tries to take it from you. If you did want to try and defend Munich, it would force you to commit at least two armies to Central Europe, which would be a complete waste of resources, and not worth the single dot you're defending. Please, please, as Italy, do not take Munich in the first three years of the game, unless you are in some very unorthodox alliance, like an Austria-Russia-Italy alliance. Don't assume that you are actually in an Austria-Russia-Italy alliance either, even if they both say so, unless Austria and Russia both open as if that's what's going on. Because that's the kind of thing Russia might pretend to agree to in an effort to lower the Austrian defenses. So those are the basics of Italian opening strategy in a nutshell. Italy is probably the most complex country to play as, hence the level of detail here. But, as you'll learn in subsequent videos, it can also be fairly rewarding. More on that soon. I hope you liked this video and found it interesting and informative. If so, I hope you'll join the hundreds of other people now who have liked and subscribed, and I hope you'll check out more of my videos. Until next time, Florida Man, out.